Greed has always fueled humanity's relentless pursuit of power and wealth. But unbridled, thoughtless greed only leads to tragedy. The myth of King Midas is perfectly illustrative of the consequences when man puts his greed above all things. The moral of this myth is powerful and is still up to date, more than 3,000 years after it was first told. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. You, like me, have already felt impressed by the technique and creativity of the artists who do the artwork of our mythological comics. But creating your own stories and letting your creativity flow is not out of your reach. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes that will help you blossom the artist within you. If you want to take your first steps into the world of comics, I recommend Ira Marx's Classes Drawing Comics, a beginner's guide. In these, he will guide you through the basics of comics so that you have the foundation to devise your first pages. But Skillshare isn't just about comics and illustration. There are numerous topics for you to explore, such as photography, marketing, music, productivity, film and video, and more. All the classes go through an intense curation process, and new premium classes are always being released. Plus, there are no ads to get in the way of your concentration. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. In the distant kingdom of Phrygia, the god Dionysus could not find Silenus, his faithful drinking companion. He was also the god's master and foster parent. Silenus was considered a sage who delivered his best lessons when drunk while acquiring the power of prophecy. The wise old man was found passed out by peasants in the forest after suffering an alcoholic coma. They took him to King Midas, who recognized and welcomed him immediately with full hospitality. There were days of drinking and feasting in honor of the illustrious guest. The god Dionysus was pleased to find his old companion so well treated by his host. He greeted King Midas and, as a sign of gratitude for the good deed, decreed to fulfill any of Midas's wishes. The ambitious Midas did not reflect deeply on the matter and quickly chose his wish. I want everything I touch to turn into gold. Are you sure? Yes, of course. I will be the richest man who ever lived. Dionysus fulfilled his wish, but felt sorry for Midas that he didn't make a better choice. Midas, eager to test his new talent, picked up a small stone that lay on the ground, and it immediately turned into a gold nugget. Euphoric, Midas touched several things, and all of them immediately displayed the golden color of gold. Midas suddenly felt hungry, and decided to eat an apple. As he touched the fruit, it turned into a copy of the golden palms in the gardens of the Hesperides. The shrewd Midas tried a new approach. He took a fork, which soon turned golden, and stuck it into a piece of bread. The king brought the fork to his mouth, and as he tried to bite into it, he felt his tooth crack, as the bread had also turned gold. The king realized that what he thought was a gift was now a curse. Midas felt that his end was inevitable, since he would quickly die without food, and he collapsed in tears on the dining table. The king's daughter arrived at the palace and saw her father weeping on the table. Attempting to console him, she touched her father's hand. Midas looked in horror at his daughter, who had turned into a statue of gold. In desperation, he knelt and asked the god Dionysus to remove that nefarious power. The god took pity on Midas, as he had no intention of harming Midas and his daughter. Dionysus asked the king to plunge into the waters of the river Pactolus, and, already in the water, to ask that the power of his touch be removed. Midas bathed in the waters, and the riverbed became covered with a golden sand, and the scales of the fish also began to glitter like gold. The king was finally free of the curse. Everything he touched returned to normal, including his daughter. After this trauma, Midas repudiated all wealth and left in the company of Pan to live simply and humbly in the fields and forests.